Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be sharing with you how to configure your Juniper devices to forward authentication requests to Radius server. Let's dig in. Whew. Big disclaimer before we get started. It's important to know that Radius authentication is only supported in the default routing instance, as well as the dedicated MGMT underscore Junos routing instance. Custom VRFs are not supported for configuring Radius. Hopefully that saves you some time. All right, folks, so if we look at the topology here, the goal of this lab is for the user on the left-hand side to be able to establish an SSH session to the Juniper switch in the middle via SSH. And the login that he uses needs to be able to be validated on the Radius server. Now, in a previous video, we set up the Radius server with the user login credentials uh, as to what that server would be expecting a client to use in order for a successful authentication. So the username is test underscore user, and the password is Juniper in all lowercase. In addition to that, we also configured the client.conf file on that Radius server so that it knows to expect to receive Radius requests from devices coming from the network of 10.0.2.0, as well as the pre-shared key that needs to be in place in order for that communication to be successful. So with that being the case, the only change that was really made here on the Radius server, I just changed the IP address information so that I could point it and align it with this topology, right? So it's gonna see its gateway as this switch in the middle here, and it has the address of 10.0.2.2. So currently from the user's perspective, it can ping the Radius server. So no issues there. Underlying communication is successful. All right. So now that we've verified end-to-end -end reachability, the first thing that we're going to want to do is hop on this Juniper switch. So if I do just that and I do a show configuration, we can see exactly what's on here, which is not much, right? We have our SSH information as well as the IP address for those respective interfaces, but that's pretty much it. The first thing that we'll need to do is enter into edit mode and we'll need to configure a user called test underscore user. So I'll do just that. I'll configure that user. I'll do a set system login and I'll say user and then I'll specify what that user's name is. Now, again, this needs to match exactly what we have configured over on the radius server, which is test underscore user in this case. And I'll go ahead and assign it the class of super user. Note that for this user, I didn't configure it a password and that's intentional because we're not expecting for this Juniper switch itself to locally validate this user when they connect to the device. No, instead we want that job to be performed by the radius server. So the next thing that we'll do is configure the settings that will point authentication requests to that radius server. So I'll do a, sh a set system radius server, specify the address of that radius server, which is in that 0.2.2. And then I'll also specify the source address. Uh, the source address just needs to be at an address that's reachable via the radius server. That could be a loopback, uh, but in my case, I'll use the physical interface pointing to it. So 10.0.2.1. And lastly, the pre-shared key that they'll need to use in order for uh, to communicate this radius information, we'll be testing 123-3. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. So now if I do a show system, I can see that I have that user created and I have the necessary radius information in place here. Now, because the default behavior by Juniper is, you know, radius isn't set up to be used. So we'll need to adjust the authentication order on this device so that we use radius before even attempting to use a local password, which in this case isn't even configured. So I'll do set system authentication order and I'll do the brackets. The first will be radius and the second will be local. Okay, password and I'll go ahead and close that. Awesome. So now that's in place, I'll do one last show pipe compare and that shows everything that we've put in place to bring this to life. Lastly, I'll do a commit and quit and we are good to go. So it's one thing to put the configuration in place and cross your fingers to hope that it runs as expected. But in this case, we wanna verify that that radius authentication process is taking place. And so in order to do that, to get visibility, we'll run the command monitor traffic interface, GE00. This is the interface pointing to that radius server. And I'll say matching host and I'll specify the address of that radius server, which in this case is 10.0.2.2. And I'll put enter. So that's gonna be running in the background. And now if I hop on my user here and I attempt to SSH uh, using that, that username of test underscore user to the, the Juniper switch at 10.0.1.1 and I hit enter, it prompts me for a password. So I'll go ahead and in this case, I'm gonna type in the wrong password intentionally. So I'm gonna do Juniper123 instead of just Juniper. And I'll hit enter and I can see it fails and drops me down to the next line. And if I go back over to the Juniper switch where I'm running that monitor traffic command, I can see that, oh, you know, it attempted to log into the device, but the radius server 
rejected that request. So how awesome. So back on this test user, we saw what a failed attempt looks like. Now let's reattempt to run that SSH command and we'll use the correct password. Type in the password of lowercase juniper and enter. And here I can see that I was able to successfully SSH into that switch. If I do a show configuration, that shows me all of the configuration that we had in place over on that device. Now, now if I check back over to the VEX, I can see that it received that request or it forwarded that request to the radius server and that radius server sent an accept message allowing this user to be successfully permitted to ssh onto the switch that's essentially it i hope you found this video helpful if you did be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel to stay tuned for future videos as always thanks for viewing and i'll see you on the next one peace